Former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows joins us on the show. Hey, man. Hey, Jimmy. It's great to be back with you. And uh, obviously, uh, those supply chains, uh, is, it's uh, that problem is just one of the problems that Joe Biden has thrust upon us in a short period of almost, you know, just a little over nine months. And it's hard to believe. But it's great to be back with you and all the listeners. You ain't kidding. So I got to ask you this right off the bat. You're, you know, former chief of staff for Donald Trump. Uh, and we all know that Donald Trump famously doesn't drink. But after nine months of watching Biden, as he thought about spiking a Diet Coke? <laughs> well, I can tell you he's doubling down on the Diet Coke. Uh, I, I, I speak to him often, as you know, and I think his, his comment to me is, can you believe that it's gotten as bad as it's gotten in such a short period of time? And, you know, if it would drive anybody to drink uh, this economy, what he's done in Afghanistan, the border, you name it. Uh, the, the good news is, is, you know, uh, Donald Trump uh, showed us how to fix it. Unfortunately, it looks like we're going to have to fix it again. Yeah, that's the real problem. I have a theory, and I was wondering about this, and you have a unique perspective about this. Is the reason they're trying to give you such a hard time about January 6th because they don't want to talk about any of the things you just mentioned, like the border, the inflation, the supply chain, Afghanistan, uh, and stuff like that? Listen, it's the only thing they've got. And so uh, when you look at the political process, what they do is they, they'll run uh, run home to uh, what they can do and what they can control. And sadly, they could control a lot of the other things that are affecting families that families actually care about, that your listeners care about. I mean, when we talk about rising gas prices and rising uh, prices in, in the supermarket, you know, the lack of, you know, you and I joked about it. You order something for for Christmas, it gets there at Easter. Well, the, the fact of the matter is, is that's closer to reality, and it's becoming reality. I know uh, my wife and I have ordered a couple of things, and I mean, it's months and months and months. Uh, I was just in California, looked out uh, on the ocean there, and there's all of these ships out there waiting to bring stuff in, but there's no workers to unload it. Uh, I mean, the supply chains are just a debacle. And, and what's the answer from the Biden administration? Well, they said we need to get new apprenticeships. I mean, come on. Uh, it just, uh, it, it, it's pathetic. And when we look at it, uh, you're right. They're just trying to change the, the message on Capitol Hill, but it's not working on Main Street. Most people realize that this is just a, a, a political act. I, well, I, and I agree with you there. And that when I saw, you know, the Washington Post telling people what we really need to do is lower our expectations, have we just quit the idea of America? Uh, under this administration? Well, we have. Lowering expectations, you know, here's the sad part about it. For a lot of us, millions and millions of us, we had very low expectations to begin <laughs> with. True. And so now what we've got is we've got the Biden administration says, just change your expectations, lower your expectations. That's something that they would say in Russia or Cuba or Venezuela, uh, you know, where you, you actually have a problem uh, because of the communist uh, regimes there. And, and yet here in America, America, uh, we're used to being able to to have full pantries, uh, full grocery stores, and quite frankly, a choice. Uh, and and I'm uh, you know to lower our expectation would be to change our expectation on who we are. You know, Donald Trump was right. He said, you know, make America great. Uh, now he's saying, make America great again, again. <laughs> and uh, and and so when when we look at that, it is a sad commentary on. Uh, the occupant in the Oval Office right now. It's really true. If you're just joining us, Mark Meadows is on the line, former White House Chief of Staff for President Trump. Um, and it, it's the indifference that's being shown. Like Jen Psaki yesterday was laughing about, you know, oh, it's the crisis of the treadmills. But the God's honest truth is it's the crisis of everything. You know, she tried to reduce it to one specific semantic point, but they're really not showing any regard for Americans. That's the part I'm surprised by because traditional politicians are usually pretty good at acting like they care, but they're not even acting like they care. And I think the border is another good example of that, because what's going on at our border is not a southern problem. It's an every state problem because the fentanyl that comes across the border is in every state, is it not? 
Well, it is in every state, and 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 interestingly enough, you know, based on some more recent reports, they're actually flying some of those people across the country into to places like New York. Uh, you know, we saw a report on that just yesterday. Uh, so it's it's a problem everywhere. But you're right. Normally they pretend like it uh, it matters to them, uh, but they've gone beyond uh, not only not pretending, they're just ignoring, and th- and that seems to be the strategy. But the polls are showing that, Jimmy. I mean, you you know the polls with uh, even among Democrats, but particularly among independents, uh, are hemorrhaging the support for Joe Biden. Even people who voted for him are, are now saying, well, gosh, we made a mistake. He's just not equipped to handle the job. I know. And, and, and I don't think anybody could argue that he is because like the conversation I keep having, um, even if with Democrats that come on the show is what would you identify as his deliverable for the American people? Like if you were running uh, in 2022 with a midterm message, I don't know what they could say to the voters. Hey, well, we gave you this because there's nothing they really gave them. <laughs> well, I'm, I've got a deliverable, Jimmy. They've given you higher gas prices, higher fuel <laughs> prices. They've given you a debacle in Afghanistan. They've given you uh, millions of people coming across our southern border. They've given you China, who is now trying to take advantage of the United States and don't, you know, they don't respect us anymore. So they've given us all of that. But is that something that you can sell in 2022? <laughs> Absolutely not. You just nailed it. So their deliverable, their actual deliverable is the let's go Brandon chant. That's the delivery. That's right. That, 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 well, and, we and you that. know, that's what we're hearing from the Oval Office. They're saying, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> it's gotten that bad. Oh, that's yeah. really funny to me. It's, you know, I laugh because it's like a coping mechanism. They, you know, I when people always compare Joe Biden to Jimmy Carter, I remind them that it took Jimmy Carter four years to do this. And Biden has taken it beyond Jimmy Carter in terms of everything we're watching build up. And it's terrible. But I wanted to ask you this, okay, uh, really quick on COVID. And then I got a quick vaccine question for you, too. Um, China's refusal to cooperate with the COVID origins probe. I don't believe that would be their position under Donald Trump. And if it was, I believe there'd at least be an intellectual curiosity in getting to the bottom of this. Are you kind of shocked that they've so openly disregarded the importance of the COVID origins probe? Well, listen, it, it's it's convenient because Dr. Fauci and others uh, have things that they don't want to come out. You know, I, I cover this in, in, in a book that will be coming out uh, soon, The Chief Chief. I cover this very topic there where I talk about the fact that, that President Trump said we're not going to fund the Wuhan uh, lab in spite of the fact that Dr. Fauci was wanting it funded and the people at HHS wanted it funded. But more more importantly than that, when you start to look at holding China accountable, we got out of the World Health Organization. We made that decision because they were actually, uh, in my opinion, being a front for the the, uh, the Chinese government. The president agreed with that, got out, and it was, was actually making them be more transparent. What do they have now? Uh, they have someone who's willing to go along with them and not only not look at the origins of what, how the, the virus came to the United States and 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 what happened. But they've got somebody who's not willing to hold them accountable for their lack of transparency. So it's a sad commentary that weakness breeds more weakness. And that's what we're seeing. Oh, it's such a good point. It's like the idea that we are, we're living in a world right now where our government is going harder against cops and healthcare workers than it is the country that gave us this virus. Like if you, you know, you remember when President Trump, and I know you do, you know, he had declared to the American people that the cure couldn't be worse than the disease. I feel like we're at that point when we're laying off cops and nurses, are we not? Well, we've gotten to the the point where we've 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 literally made it where we're laying off nurses and and first responders, the same people that we said were critical to the workforce uh, back before the vaccine was actually developed. Now, what we're saying is, well, you're not that critical because we're going to make sure that you you have this mandate. Listen, it was a, a, a wonderful uh, you know. 
uh, ability of science to be able to create the vaccines. But we live in America. It's not a place that you mandate that. And, uh, you know, if people uh, don't want to take the vaccine, it shouldn't be mandated. I can tell you that uh, I've got not only a lot of family and friends that take that position, but here's where we are. We ought to, ought to be looking at therapeutics. And what happened is Dr. Fauci and others, uh, when the president was pressing for therapeutics, and you talk about the cure can't be worse uh, you know, uh, than the symptoms, uh, he was saying we need to get therapeutics. So if you get this, at least we can treat it. Now what we've got is, is a, a perverted uh, mandate that's not only putting a chilling effect on our supply chain, but it's making us make uh, irrational decisions across the country. Man, what a mess it really is. And, and I, I'm just so fascinated by all of it. And I just, you know, it's got to be on some level frustrating for you guys because I can't think of an, er- an area where you wouldn't be doing a better job, you know. Um, but it rem- you know what it reminds me of right now? It really, when you ever watch like an old cop movie, even like a Dirty Harry, you know, where like they take away his badge, but he keeps working on the case back at the apartment. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like you and Trump are at home and you're still working on the case after hours. We, Is that we true? Are. I can tell you every day. We're talking about what we need to do, both for the economy, for holding China accountable, for uh, actually, you know, it's sad because the Biden administration not only stopped the building of the wall, but then did an open border policy, but then paid people to look at the very uh, parts of the material. uh, And we're paying people to not build the wall. And so we're not even saving money uh, just so that we can actually help the Biden administration with their political agenda. But the president is all in. He's making sure that uh, he communicates that. Still, uh, President Trump's endorsement is the most sought after thing that I've ever seen in politics, uh, certainly in my lifetime, but I think in the history of politics. Yeah, I, I, I'd have to agree with you there. And I got to add one more thing to that. He looks like uh, he's losing weight, so you're not feeding him any he North Car- you're not feeding him any North Carolina barbecue. <laughs> no, no North Carolina barbecue. No, he is. Uh, he's uh, he's losing weight. He, he's playing a little bit of golf, but golly, he's working as hard uh, in in many ways uh, as I've seen him on behalf of the American people. That's what they don't see. I mean, every day that I talk to him, you know, he's had multiple meetings, multiple conversations, and and those are early in the morning, late in the evening, and uh, it 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 is incredible just to see his efforts, uh, and he's going to stay engaged to make sure that uh, the, the forgotten man and woman are forgotten no more. All right. Well, we love to hear that, and, uh, you know, if you don't uh, wind up being a chief of staff again, you definitely have a future as a personal trainer. You're doing good work on the guy. I've seen the photos. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell him that. I'll yeah. tell him. Keep up the good work. I appreciate your time today, Mark. All right. Thanks, Jimmy. Good my, to be with you. Man, Take you care. Too. There he goes, the great Mark Meadows. I, I, I got to tell you, man, if he is feeding Trump barbecue, he ain't giving him the sides. It's an Atkins. There's no mac and cheese. <laughs> He's not getting any any of the starch or any of the carbs because he looks thin. I was talking to Larry Trump about this the other day. He could be, uh, you know, a, probably a golf hustler because his golf game has gotten so good. Everybody keeps telling me that. But he's getting slim, man. 